Welcome to Essentials Explained. In this video, we'll be discussing data manipulation. We'll talk about the difference between wide and long data formats and how to solve problems more broadly in Excel. This is to help you in case you run into a situation where you don't have a formula to solve your problem, or if we lived in a world where great educational resources weren't available at the tip of your fingertips, like you could find at Essentials Explained. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, let's dive in. So let's talk about data manipulation and data structures. So key question to start with is what is the difference between wide and long data formats? The easiest way to think about this is that wide data formats don't repeat values in their first column where long formats do. So let's look at a wide data column on our left, unique values in the group ABC. It has descriptive variables as the column headers and then multiple columns for its values. Let's look at a long data format. It has duplicate values in its far left column in its groups, ABC, ABC. It has descriptive variables as individual rows in its table and then a single value column. Let's look at a number of different examples to really understand this idea a little bit better. So we have wide data format, we have a long data format, and what makes each of these wide versus long? So our wide data format, we have unique variables in our first column. In our long data format, we have duplicate variables. In our wide data format, we have value descriptions as our column headers, where in our long data format, we have value descriptions in our individual rows. And then in our wide data format, we have multiple value columns, where in our long data set, we only have a single value column. One more example here, let's look at a wide example and a long example. So in our wide data set, we have unique variables in the far left column. In our long data set, we have duplicate variables. In our wide set, we have value descriptions as the column headers, where in our long set, we have the value descriptions as rows. In our wide set, we have multiple value columns, where in our long set, we have a single value column. One more example, just to show you how this works with non-numeric variables. So this is the same idea. There's a wide format and a long format. These are managers of different sales regions for different fruits. Within our wide data format, we have, again, unique variables in the far left column. In our long format, we have duplicate variables. In our wide format, we have value descriptions as our column headers. In our long format, we have value descriptions as rows. In our wide format, we have multiple value columns. In our long format, we have a single value column. So now that we've understood what are the two basic structures of our data, let's talk about how we can utilize those to solve problems in Excel. Any Excel problem is going to be trying to get to some kind of output, right? Some kind of chart, some kind of summarized table, some kind of number you're looking to solve for and you're gonna to have to figure out how to get there with some kind of raw data. So you'll have maybe a database, maybe access to a flat file, and what you'll wanna do is utilize some kind of formula or some kind of approach to transform that raw data into your output. Sounds pretty easy, but is, is often more complex than this nifty little diagram. So if I think about this problem, what if you don't necessarily know how to use the formula? What if you, you don't, know how to get there? What if there is a formula that isn't available to you? How else could you go about solving this problem? The easiest way is to transform your raw data. So is there a way to switch to a long format or switch to a wide format or vice versa to build some kind of modified data set that will enable you to use a formula you do know how to use or is available in Excel to get to that same output? And so thinking about how your raw data is structured and what is preventing you from achieving your output will be incredibly helpful in understanding how you can ultimately achieve the output you're looking for. So we pulled in this margin percent utilizing an index match match. Let's talk about a different way to set this up and how we might get this data into our working data set if we didn't know how to use that formula. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna go and look at our product data. And so what we have here is this is in a wide data format. And so each store has the six different products and the margin information. So what I wanna do is I wanna translate this 
to a long data format so that I have this margin information in a single column. And so alt NVT lets me put in a pivot table. So I'm gonna drag my store number, my category into the rows, and then I'm gonna drag each one of my products or my values into the value section. All we're doing here is we're actually just recreating the table that we had in the lookups, right? So you have a hundred rows, you have six columns. Here in this sheet, we have you know, 101 rows and 100 rows if you're really just looking at your data and then six columns. What I want to do is I actually want to put all of this data in a single row. And so if I take my sigma values variable and I drag it under my store number, this has collapsed all of my values into my rows, right? Nothing else is blown out into my columns and I've effectively translated this data from a wide format to a long format. I can't do an easy lookup on this based on the format of the pivot table. But thankfully, in Excel, it's pretty easy to adjust our pivot table. So if I go to design and I go to report layout, I can select the tabular form. And then if I go to repeat all item labels, it will give me every single item label I need to look this up. And let's say I wanted to do this really quickly. I could add a concatenation column where I use store one, sum of product A, let's just say I fill this down and I'll make this yellow so I know that what I'm referring to. This is a, a pretty quick way to put it together because if I go back to my working data, I can select this column and let's call this margin percent two. What I can do here is I can use a sum ifs to go to sheet 12 and I can select my range, which is these rows locked in place and then my criteria range, which is the same idea. It is just my concatenation column locked in place. And then what's my criteria? I'm gonna use a concatenate, go back to my working data, and it will be the store number with sum of blank and my product. So if I fill this down, Let's do a quick check. I've recreated this formula in a slightly different way, right? This was not the cleanest formula, and but it works. It's obviously effective and was very, very quick. What I would do just to make this a little bit cleaner is maybe pull this out into a couple different columns to make your life easier. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm actually just gonna turn off these grand totals because I think that was a little bit annoying just to have at the bottom. Um, and so what I'll do is I'm gonna first pull out this product A. So I don't need to deal with that sum of in my formula. And so the easiest way to do this is with the mid formula. So if I say mid, what is the text I want? What is the start number? What is the number of characters? So let's just put this at one and let's say the number of characters is 255. It returns the entire text string. Let's say I put this start number at five. It removes the beginning part. Let's say I put it at seven. I have an extra space. Let's say I put it at eight. Great, now I have product A, product B, product C. This won't always work, right? You can't always just have a specific number that will be the start of your phrase. Sometimes you need something a little bit more dynamic. And so when you need something more dynamic, what I would recommend using is a search function. So a search function will show you what number character any text appears in a phrase. And so if I'm looking for, let's say the phrase of within this value, I close that and it shows me five. If I was looking for maybe some, it would show me one. It would show me the first instance of that phrase in my text. And so if I go back and let's say I wanna do a search for of space within text, sum of product A, I close that. It gives me something a little funky. And so why is that? It's because it finds the beginning of your string. So it finds the beginning of this of space so if you wanna use the beginning of a phrase or the beginning of a string, make sure you add however many characters are in your string to the start number. So for instance, this is of space. So I'm just gonna add three characters. 
And so now this is returning what I want. The other way to do this is to, instead of looking at what immediately precedes your string, you can look for the start of it. And so if I change this to product, I can easily get the same result. And this will just look for product. The key here is making sure that you have a unique phrase within your text that you are able to easily query on that will always work throughout your lookup. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a concatenation between store one and product A, or store and product number. And so this concatenation formula, some people wanna use, you know, space and space, close parentheses, um, and they think this looks a little bit nicer and a little bit cleaner. I'm not super preferential to it. I think it actually opens yourself up to making mistakes with the spaces, with the ampersand. It actually just think makes it look more complicated and opens yourself up for errors, which I always want to avoid. I'll delete this column and it's going to ref me out on my working data, but that's fine. And so let's say this is our product and then this is our concat lookup. Now what I have, and I'll just make this yellow to show what I want. Now what I can do is I can go back to this sheet. And again, it's ref because I deleted the column. And so if I use some ifs on the sum range, which is this information here, I lock that in place. My criteria range is my concatenated column, lock that in place. And then my criteria is concatenate store number and product. And that's working. One more time, just to make it easy, maybe I'll show you one other cool little thing you can do here is you could actually build a concatenate column in here. So let's just say concat product customer, and you want to use concatenate for store number and product number, fill this down. And instead of doing this concatenation in your formula, you instead reference that cell this will also work, right? This is the same way to do it and certainly keeps this formula a lot cleaner. So if someone opens this up and is trying to figure out how exactly you wrote this formula, they can pretty easily say, oh, and it's referencing N3, which is the concatenation of store 75 and product A. That's another way to do it. That's a little bit cleaner. Again, people have different preferences, but different way to do it. And then finally, I'm just going to show you how to do this with a single index match now that we have everything in our column. So index. Let's go to our margin. Let's lock that in place. Now we want a match on our lookup value, which we so nicely made as our concatenation column. And then our lookup array, which is the concatenation column in our lookup sheet. Lock that in place, exact match. And again, I'll fill that down. And these are all tying up. So a few different ways to do this same analysis and a few ways to think about solving the problem differently by manipulating your data structures or using a different approach that you may not have thought of. So last point on data manipulation is you're actually going to want to prefer to use the simpler approach, right? Where we did the double index match instead of utilizing a pivot table into a sum if. And, and why is that? that? That's because best practice will almost always utilize the fewest number of steps. Because anytime you introduce a new modified data set, that's another step you're going to need to recreate in the process of getting to your output. So if you have a refreshed data set, if you have a change to the analysis, that's another step you're going to need to recreate and another step you're going to need to recreate accurately and consistently with your previous analysis, where if you have one single step, right, like a double index match or an index match match, it would be much easier to recreate than having to recreate a new modified data set. So takeaway here, helpful to understand different data types and how to work through transforming your data into a different data structure. But if possible to maintain your raw data in its existing format, that will typically be the preferred approach as opposed to transforming your data. If you're interested in understanding the basics of Excel's calculation formulas, notably sum ifs and count ifs, please check out the next video in our series. Otherwise, thank you for joining us at Essentials Explained, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.